Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the crossover event. So it finished last night and it was amazing, especially the ending and some of the cameos were just absolutely fantastic and mind-blowing, especially the Ezra Miller one, which obviously everyone's been freaking out about because that's a massive crossover moment. You know, the Arrowverse collides with the DC Extended Universe. So we're going to talk about that today and we're going to talk about the idea of the Justice League in the TV show. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So yeah, last night in part 5, we had some massive stuff go down. We had all these cameos towards the end which we'll talk about because I think that relates back to the Justice League idea and the idea of this new multiverse being created and what the possibilities are. So we'll talk about that in a second. But we need to talk about the cameo in part 4 with Ezra Miller as the Flash. So it has to be said straight up, I wasn't the biggest fan of Ezra Miller as the Flash. I thought he was probably the weakest point about Justice League. I actually liked Justice League, like, really quite a lot. It was a really enjoyable experience, especially seeing all the different moments. It's sort of very fan service heavy, and especially when there was the Green Lantern that popped up, I remember screaming in the cinema. So obviously the DC sort of fanboy within me sort of struck out in that film. But I wasn't the biggest fan of him. However, this got me so excited because what are the possibilities? And the idea that they crossed over the DC Extended Universe, everyone's been talking about this for years. Could the TV people go into the films? Could the film people come into the TV? And that's the same thing for Marvel, really. Marvel has sort of linked the idea, but they never actually had like a proper crossover with these characters. They did it. They said that there was going to be some surprise cameos that you weren't expecting. I thought we got the ones that we were expecting. I thought it wasn't going to be anything else, really. You know, maybe one more cameo we knew Stargirl was going to show up, and that's all I kind of knew as of right at that moment before I watched the episode. And then we get this. So, the main question we have to ask is, is the DC Extended Universe going to be featured much in the Arrowverse? And I think the simple answer to that is no, because they cost a lot more. The actors are you know, high salary wages, like if you got Gal Gadot on, or like, I know Ben Affleck's not in it anymore, but pretend he was, that would be fucking expensive for the CW, and I don't think the CW has that expense. But there is a possibility that, say, they do another crossover next year, there is a chance that they could show up, that at least like one person, and, you know, I think it could link to the Flashpoint film. Recently re-announced that, yeah, they are doing an iteration of Flashpoint in Ezra Miller's film, that Obviously, this confirms it. Ezra Miller is here to stick around. So, yeah, his new film, the Flash film that they're trying to make and they've been trying to make for years, is supposed to be a Flashpoint film. And I think there is actually a chance that due to it being Flashpoint, Grant Gustin could show up for a cameo. There could be some cameos from our TV actors, considering that they have confirmed that, yeah, the Arrowverse is in the same multiverse as the DC Extended Universe. Obviously, they changed the framing for when they were filming those scenes. You had the black bars, which was very much so in line with, you know, the film ratio that they film for actual films, not TV. You know, TV is normally just like, you know, the full screen, you don't have the black bars or anything. I don't know the exact dimensions, but it sort of broke that barrier, and I thought that was kind of strange at first. I didn't know why they did that, but then when I saw him, I was like, ah. Oh, Maybe this makes more sense. Maybe there's a reason for this. And so, yeah, I think there is a possibility that Grant and everyone could show up in Flashpoint just for, like, a little cameo to show the multiverse. Obviously, this confirms that he knows now about the multiverse. You know, he did disappear because, you know, he was in the Speed Force and that's what happened there. But he didn't know what Star Labs was. He's not called the Flash yet, although we call him the Flash, you know, he's potentially getting his name from Barry talking to him about the Flash, like, you're the Flash, I'm the Flash, I like your suit, I like your suit. So, yeah, you know, there is a possibility, but I wouldn't hold out too much on that. This is absolute crazy, and I don't know if it's going to get even more crazy. Okay, so now let's talk about the possibility of, you know, other characters showing up in the Arrowverse. So, like I said, I think there is a possibility for future crossovers that they could show up in cameos, but I wouldn't bet on them having big roles, and same thing goes for the Arrowverse shows, because the Arrowverse actors work 
I think it's about seven to eight months of the year. They're in Vancouver, they're filming, that's not where they film the films. I don't exactly know the specific locations where they normally film, but obviously it changes with film to film. But yeah, they're in Vancouver. I know a lot of the DC stuff don't actually shoot in Vancouver. And you know, they're so busy, they're gonna learn their scripts, learn everything because they've got like 20 to 23 episodes in a season and they really have just like one break in the summer to make some stuff and that's about it and I you know I don't think they can sort of ditch out that easy really from their job however there is a possibility that they could ditch out for like a few days and just record a cameo in said flash film or whatever film it could be but anyway, so let's move on to talk about the Justice League. So the end of the crossover set up that, you know, the Earths, they've joined together. Earth 1, Earth 38 is now Earth Prime, which is how it is in the comics. That moment, you know, blew my mind. And then it led into the Justice League stuff where we get to see the round table, you know, the table with the seven of them. And obviously, Oliver, there's always a seat for the Green Arrow. So I suspect that Mia's actually going to take up that mantle very soon, whether it be the next crossover or whatever comes next when we see this table again. But anyway, so they're all on the same Earth. We've got the Justice League set up. We've got Black Lightning. We've got the Flash, Supergirl, and a whole bunch more of them. And so I think the next crossover is going to be a Justice League crossover. They might call it Justice League. They might call it, you know, something along those lines. Maybe there is a comic book title from a Justice League run and I think they could make an iteration of that heading into the next crossover. I think there is a possibility of that because they set this up, they have the chairs, they got the logos, it looks so freaking cool. They got the Hall of Justice on Earth Prime, everything is lining up for a massive Justice League sort of showdown. And we got a teaser of that in the crossover with them all lining up together, it was really cool. And, you know, now they've got this quarters where, you know, they can operate from and they can do Justice League stuff from. I don't believe that they're actually going to use it that much, like this season. I think when there's a threat, when there is a crossover to be had, I think that's when they'll go back to there. Unless they ever make a Justice League show, I don't think they're going to use that location very much. However, it is so freaking cool and I would love to see it, like, all the time because, you know, that got me so excited. So, yeah, it's definitely set up the Justice League, although they never specifically said it. It's completely in line with all that the Justice League stands for and all that it was in the comics. Okay, so now let's talk about some of those cameos. So, go check out yesterday's review. It's like over 20 minutes long. I go into a lot of depth about all of this, but I thought I would bring it back up because I think it's a very big deal and, you know, I really want to talk about it some more. And I think you guys would be interested in it. So we got those cameos and those cameos were so freaking cool. Like you have Oliver doing the voice overlay at the end of the crossover. You know, the multiverse came back. You know, there is that graphic that goes along with it. It was really cool. And then you got obviously Earth Prime is how it ends. But what you have is a cameo from Stargirl and her heroes on her Earth and what's going to be happening in her show because that's coming out very very soon so be on the lookout for that and also you've got the Green Lanterns I believe it's actually a shot from the Green Lantern film so is it canonizing that are we getting a different version of the Green Lanterns I think there is a high possibility that we're going to link this to the Green Lantern TV show that's coming out and I think there could be a possibility of crossover there was talk about it being a part of the Arrowverse and it seems to be like this is them confirming it I don't really necessarily think it's like the confirmation that the Green Lantern on Earth 12 you know as it said in the crossover is like the Ryan Reynolds version of himself I think that it's going to be the HBO Max TV show that's going to be the thing that they cross over with if they do and so you have Swamp Thing as well, that was amazing to see. Titans and Doom Patrol, obviously we saw Titans earlier in the crossover, but seeing them again, using some reused footage obviously, but it's just so exciting seeing the confirmation of all these, you know, heroes and TV shows being a part of the Arrowverse in some way or another. And so the final cameo was Brandon Ralph's original version of Superman from the film back in the early 2000s, so that was really cool to see as well so yeah that's about it thank you guys for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video please be sure to subscribe as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers share this video around share my review for crisis yesterday i freak out in that video so you gotta go check that out 
I promise you, you'll like it. So I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.